Hey, this is Mr. Mason and what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're just going to review how to find the percent markup of a given price. Well, this problem reads that Max's appliance and electronics store obtained a refrigerator for a wholesale price of $1,400. The store marked the price up 15%. What is the retail price that the consumer will have to pay? All right, so this appliance store has a refrigerator that costs them $1,400. What I mean by costing them is that the wholesale price of $1,400 is how much that that store paid for just to have that refrigerator in their store. Now for that store to make money off of it, they have to mark this price up so they can make a profit. And they mark this refrigerator up by 15%. And we have to figure out how much will the consumer have to pay. So the consumer really is going to pay the entire wholesale price plus an extra 15%. So really, they're paying the original price, which is 100% or the whole thing, plus an extra 15%. So really, we're looking for what 115% of this wholesale price is, and that is going to be the retail price. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off to the side here, and I'm going to multiply 1,400 by 115% written as its decimal equivalent. Now, if you forgot how to convert a percent into a decimal, just put a decimal at the end of your percentage, if there is not a decimal in that number, and move it two spaces to the left. So we have to multiply 1,400 by 1 1.15. All right, so we multiply 5 times 1,400, and that's going to give us 7,000. And then we put a zero here to hold this place. And one times 1400 is 1400. And now we have to put two zeros to hold two place values. And of course, one times 1400 is 1400. And then we add the columns up 0, 0, 0, 11, 6, and 1. And we have two numbers after our decimal, so we place it right here. So the retail price that a consumer will have to pay for this refrigerator will be $1,610. Now, another way that some people like to approach this problem is they just like to multiply 1,400 by 15%, but that will only show you how much the price increases by. That's not going to give you the retail price. That's just how much of an increase is there. So if we were to do that, Let's see what we would end up getting. All right, we write 1400 here. That would be a total of $210. So some people just like to find the percent of the wholesale price, and then they understand this is how much the price is going to increase by. But then you have to add that back to the original amount to find the retail price. And 1400 $210 is. $1,610. For me personally, though, whenever I find the retail price of something, I like to multiply the wholesale price by the percent increase added to 100%. So if the price increases 15%, then I like to multiply by 115% because you're paying 100% of the original amount plus a 15% extra. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, this example is a little bit different than the previous example. In the first example, they gave us a wholesale price and then they gave us the percent markup. But with this example, they give us the wholesale price, the retail price, and we have to use those two figures to determine the percent markup. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the retail price of $6,875 and subtract from that the wholesale price of $5,500. And what we see is that the price increased by a total of $1,375. So this amount right here represents a percent of the original amount. So what we have to do is determine what percent is 1,375 from the original amount of $5,000. 
and that's going to be the percent markup that was applied to 5,500. All right, so what we have to do next is we have to take 1,375 and divide that by 5,500. And that is going to give us a decimal value. And then we have to take that decimal amount and convert it into a percentage. So what we have to do since this number on the inside is smaller than this outside number is we have to add a decimal here, here, and we add a zero in the first place value after the decimal, which is the tenths place. And then we continue to add zeros if needed. All right, so what we're going to do is divide 5,500 into 13,750. So we know that 5,000 times 2 is 10,000, and times 3 is 15,000, and that would be too big. So this only fits into here two times. And doubling 5,500 is 11,000. So we subtract 11,000 from 13,750, which gives us 2,750. Now we add a zero in the next place value and drop it down. And I'm going to estimate here, this is about 5,000 and this is a little bit over 25,000. And I know 5,000 goes into 25,000 five times. So if we multiply 5,500 by five, we end up getting exactly 27,500. So this fits into here exactly five times, leaving us with no remainder. So to convert this into a percentage, we just take the decimal point and move it two spaces to the right. So we would say that the car dealership marked up the wholesale price by 25%, which means the consumer is going to pay 125% of the wholesale price. All right, let's do another example. All right, this problem reads that at Ashley's Boutique, the retail price of a dress is $180. The markup of the wholesale price was 20%. What was the wholesale price of the dress before being marked up? All right, so they give us what the price is going to be that the consumer will have to pay or the retail price, and they give us what the markup was. So we have to work backwards to figure out what was the price that the boutique obtained the dress for? What was the wholesale price of that dress? So in general, what we've been doing is we've been starting with the wholesale price, and then we've been multiplying that by the percent markup added to 100% to find what the retail price is. So we've been taking 100% and adding that to whatever the markup price is. I'm going to put MU for markup. And that's going to be equal to the retail price. So what we're going to do here is this. They don't give us what the wholesale price is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a W for now. And we know we have to multiply that by 120%. Because the percent markup is given, so we're going to take 100% and add that to 20%. And that means we have to take the wholesale price and multiply that by 120%. But remember, we have to write that as a decimal. And that's going to be equal to the retail price, which is given, and that is 180. Now, if you notice here, what we have is really an algebraic equation and a quite simple one. So I can switch these out because of the commutative property of multiplication. I'm going to simplify 1.20 to be 1.2 and just write a W after it equals 180. And all we have to do now is solve for W. And the opposite of multiplying W by 1.2 is to divide by 1.2. So all we have to do is divide this side by 1.2. So 1.2 cancels with itself. It doesn't cancel out to nothing. It's really just 1. So you, we write 1w at the bottom. And on the right here, we divide 180 by 1.2. So let's go to the side here and take 180 and divide it by 1.2. All right, because we have a decimal in the divisor, we have to write one in the dividend. And we have to move this decimal to the end which means we have to add one zero here 
and move our decimal one space to the right. And then we move it up. And this is where our decimal is going to remain for the final answer. Now 12 goes into 18 once. That leaves us with 6. And we drop the 0. And 12 goes into 65 times. Exactly 5 times. And I know the remainder is going to be 0. But I still have a blank space in this place value. So we just fill it with the 0. So the wholesale price before being marked up was $150. Now, if you get a word problem where they give you the retail price and you have to work backwards to find the wholesale price, instead of using a formula, if you're not comfortable with that, all you really have to do is take the retail price, which in this case is $180. And then instead of multiplying like we do with the markup, you divide by whatever the markup is added to. 100. So in this case, you would divide by 120%, which as a decimal in its simplest form is 1.2. So this would be the quick version of solving for the wholesale price. I just want to say thanks for checking out this video. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button on your way out, and I look forward to seeing you back at my channel soon.